Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2024 BMW i5 in the M60 trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 255-35 Continental tires in the front, 285-30s in the back. Now these are wrapped around 21 inch alloy wheels with a gloss black finish. It also has a high performance braking system with ventilated disc rotors on all four wheels. The front of the vehicle is fairly straightforward. Uh, it has a gloss black trim in contrast with the color, which is kind of like a silver gray color. I'm not sure exactly what the name of this color is because I don't have the window sticker and there's like several colors that look just like this on the website. So uh, once I find out, I'll put it in the description or in the comments here. So it has the radar adaptive cruise control system and the sensor is right here in the center, that flat spot. Now it has these cameras. You can see this little camera right here. It's kind of offset, kind of surprised that it's not in the center somewhere, more integrated better, uh, but that's where it is. It works fine, but it kind of looks a little bit off. Now it has the parking sensors across the front and they're integrated into the black portion here and here on the outer portion as well on the outer side here. And it has, the, in addition to that camera, there's also cameras up at the top of the windshield. Uh, and it has a pretty advanced lane keep assist system. Also a camera so you can keep an eye on the road on the uh, gauge cluster. It's pretty interesting and I would go into it and check it out. And also you can see my night video as well. And speaking of night videos, uh, the headlight system. I show those at night and how well they work. It's a dual projector system. And it has the, it seems like it has the uh, matrix type high beams, but they're kind of disabled. They basically just go from high and low beams. It also has cornering lights as well. But yeah, you gotta check out my night video. Pretty impressive headlights. There's a lot of impressive things about this vehicle at nighttime, including the illuminated grill here. So during the day, uh, you can't see it, but right in here, there's an illuminated grill and it uh, looks fantastic. Just really has a nice kind of subtle accent at night that makes this vehicle stand out. Looking at the profile here, uh, there is some more gloss black here at the base of the doors and that continues here on the back and it kind of accents the wheels really nice. And then this center pillar is blacked out with a gloss black as well. Body colored handles that are kind of recessed in the vehicle. The side mirrors our carbon fiber here on the top look really nice really impressive and have these little sport wing on the side mirror apparently it's kind of interesting and this has a very pretty advanced camera system and there's one of the cameras here located on the side this is what the key looks like and it's a full proximity key it has the bmw emblem there is the lock button but if you press it three times it's also the remote start button there's the unlock button the ability to open up the power trunk panic button here there is a physical key on the inside as well uh, this has a little bit of weight to it but it looks nice gets fingerprints on it and stuff but uh that's like everything that's gloss black but as long as you have the vic the key in your pocket in a bag as long as it's with you uh, you can lock the door with putting your finger or hand over that little sensor right there. And to unlock it, you simply put your hand under the handle here and it has a sensor there. So that's how that particular system works. Now there is a physical key location here as well, under here, you slip this up and then you can access it. I don't know if you can see that, but it does have one in there. It's out of the passenger door, it has a combination of things going on here. Uh, for one thing it has, this is soft touch here as well as down here. So it's a soft surface. This is soft as well. Uh, and then we have the contrast stitching there and these pockets there's a pocket here which is kind of rubberized which is good but down here this is hard plastic on the inside of that compartment now there's an accent light here on the door and you see that at, in the night video how you change the colors and stuff like that that extends here on the dash there's some carbon fiber there's also a really nice speaker grill for the Bowers and Wilkins uh, system and there's some cloth here Another speaker at the bottom. And then I like the way the handle kind of looks like a hockey stick where it, it kind of is blended in with this accent here. I'm 
There's a threshold area, power seat here on the passenger side, and it goes up and down, tilt, all that kind of stuff. It also has a thigh extension here as well. It's manual. This vehicle has an option of vegan leather or actual leather, and I'm not really sure what this is. It looks like real leather to me, and it has this, this suede material here on the side where it meets up uh, with the hard plastic. Um, but it does have both options, vegan leather and regular leather. But yeah, looking really nice, very comfortable seats. Here's the floorboard in front of the passenger side. Floor mat snaps in place. Lots of room here on the passenger side as well as the driver's side. Uh, this is a soft touch material here. There is a locking glove compartment and you just press this button, open it up. And a felt lined glove compartment, just kind of normal size, I guess. We have more carbon fiber looking really nice. There's more of the ambient accent light. And then the dash is a kind of rubbery soft, non-reflective soft surface. There's a huge glass roof too. We'll look at that later on. You can see the opening here in the front is pretty wide open. Getting in and out is fairly easy. The swing of the door is nice. Lots of room this way. The back door uh, is a little bit less room, but still fairly easy to get in and out. The swing of the door is okay, and uh, headroom and all that stuff is fine. Now you notice there's a number five right here in this portion. There's also one here. Kind of nice touch. Kind of put it in that place. It's covered up with the doors when the doors are shut, but it's kind of neat that they put it there. Here's the inside of the back door. It does have shades, retractable shades here uh, that you can extend into the, the end of the door there to get out of your way. And it has the soft surfaces here, so here, everything is basically soft. Um, then there's a pocket, big speaker grill, looking really nice. Now there's also a manual uh, switch here for the child safe door locks. Uh, so you can switch that on or off depending on which you know, like if you just want to have one door or the other you can do that so there's a threshold area and you can see it kind of has some tapering here uh, but it's not really a big issue as far as getting in the vehicle it kind of lines up with the seats nicely and pretty decent amount of leg room here on the sides but the center has a pretty significant hump there in the middle there's a USB port uh, on the back of both front seats. There's also this little attachments for accessories. I don't have any accessories to demonstrate it, but that's what that's supposed to be for anyway. It has a little accent light here at nighttime. You can see that. And this back of the seat is a soft surface and it's kind of dished out, give you a little bit more leg room. The back seat is basically a bench seat. And it has these cup holders here in the center, armrest, very soft. Can move that up out of the way. Here's the Isofix or latch system for car seats. These kind of flip up and uh, you can access it really easy. But yeah, these back seats are pretty nice. There is two USB-C ports here in addition to the ones on the back of the seats and a little storage cubby there as well. And these seats do fold down as well. The charge port is here on the passenger side and it locks with the vehicle. So when a vehicle is locked, it's locked as well. It has a seal right here, seals up pretty good. And then there is a regular uh, charge port and then the fast DC charger. And you can charge up to 350 kilowatt uh, charging rate at the, at the DC fast charger. And then the regular home charger can go up to 48 amps. Now it has a black roof uh, and it kind of blends in the glass roof. So you kind of blends the whole roof together looking on the outside Then it has this I guess kind of like a shark fin type antenna here in the center It's also gloss black. The third brake light is here at the top of the glass And it has a carbon fiber little deck lid spoiler looking pretty cool And the badging looks nice too. Nice colors. It says M60 here BMW and I like the fact that the uh, the emblem isn't like oversized, it's like normal size. I-5 on that side. 
Now the backup camera is kind of like in this weird spot where it looks like it's kind of tacked on like an aftermarket thing. It's not, it's not in the center and it's kind of tacked on with the tag. So if that was integrated a little bit better, I think it would look overall better. Uh, it just kind of, kind of looks a little cheesy right there. But anyways, it has the parking sensors across the back. We have more of the gloss black here as well, here in this area. And kind of like simulated diffusers as well. Now the tail lights, all LED tail lights, uh, and it has red turn signals. And you can see that in my night video, reverse lights, brake lights, turn signals, tail lights, all that stuff is shown in the night video. Down here is reflectors. These are not, uh, they're not lights, they're just reflectors. So opening up the power trunk, you can simply just use the key or push a button under here. And it lifts up and there's carpeted on the inside here. So the cargo area back here uh, is pretty interesting. A lot of positives and a few negatives here. So uh, this, this particular vehicle has the tire inflator kit, no spare tire. And then it has a little bag holders here and they're on both sides, and that's really handy. Little storage cubby here on the right side. And this goes way in there. So sometimes it's kind of a hassle because you get like almost lay down and reach way in there to try to grab something. Um, so it's nice to have all this extra space, but you know, sometimes it's a little bit of a hassle. So if you had some kind of organizer back here, a net pocket or something that can keep your stuff from sliding up there when you don't have so much stuff, uh, that helps out. There is tie downs up there as well. Now this lifts up and there is additional subfloor storage. Uh, there's also the charge uh, cable in here. And this can be charged with a, uh, in this case, it has a 220 connection. It also has a 110 connection. So this is a portable charger that's very versatile, um, has very robust heavy duty cables and just a really high quality design feeling um, charger. This particular one goes up to 40 amps. So uh, on the 220, it goes up to 40 amps. The vehicle is capable of doing 48 amps, uh, but the typical outlet, the 220 outlet, um, you you would be limited to 40 amps. If you need to go to 48 amps, you need to direct wire uh, your charger. Um, it's really good direct wire either way, but this is a nice portable that it comes with. Now you notice, I'm kind of surprised the vehicle like this, this nice vehicle, a lot of positives, it has a exposed metal and wires and stuff under here. Also, the cargo light isn't all that great. So you can check that out in my night video, but just the fact that if you if you load up your stuff up to the top, you're going on a trip and all your luggage is pa packed in here, it's gonna be scraping against metal. So kind of surprised. Um, I've seen, you know, $25,000 vehicles have this carpeted. So I'm not sure why this one is not carpeted. Maybe there's a good reason. But I do like the way they have this covered up here to where water flows. And this is a seamless right here. There's no places for things to catch or anything like that. It's very easy to keep this area clean. Uh, some vehicles, they kind of have some spots that's hard to clean. It catches dirt and stuff like that. This one is nice and smooth. And little th there's a lot of little things about this vehicle that's really nice. Just nice little touches here and there. You can fold the seats down, and it's a 60-40 split, so you can fold down one side or the other and add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space. Or you can fold them both down and get a just a huge additional space. I mean, you already have a big trunk, but this just kind of adds a little bit more. Lowering the power lift, the power trunk, there's two buttons. One to simply lower it, the other one is to lower it and lock the vehicle. Typically I start the vehicle now, but if I start it and then get out, it just turns automatically turns off. So we'll just leave it off for right now. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You notice the floor mat snaps in place. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, and footrest. Nice raised rubber, aluminum pedals, nice and sporty looking. Very comfortable footrest there on the left side as well. Now, let's go ahead and open the hood. The hood latch is kind of hidden under here. So you kind of reach under there and grab it and release it and then release it again. So you just pull it twice, and that way you can lift up the hood. Now we can just grab the hood and lift it up with no catch or anything. And it does hold itself up. You notice there's no insulation under here. There's no storage compartment either. And really, the vehicle's designed to where the user doesn't have to lift the hood. Uh, unless you want to 
check here on the windshield washer fluid. You can go ahead and fill that up. The battery is located here under that little plastic piece cover. Um, you can jump it here. There's a access to it right there, the positive and negative. But in general, you know, it, it's not really, there's nothing really to service or do anything under here really. Um, so windshield washer, washer fluid, that's it, you know. Um, this does lift up and you can take this off. So you just, un, just lift it up and un, unsnap it basically. And you can look in here, but there's no engine or anything. It's, this is all climate control and battery uh, control type stuff. This is a fully electric vehicle, all wheel drive with a separate motor in the front and back. It puts out 593 horsepower with a zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds and an estimated range of 256 miles. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, the blind spot detection system has a little triangle indicator here on the side mirror and that's for the rear cross traffic alert as well. And it has the presets for the seat, two of them. You also have these little shortcuts to go to like the seat controls in this case. There's the door lock controls. And then here is the power windows. The, the rear shade can be opened and closed here. You can lock the rear windows so they don't go down for kids and stuff like that. Here's the window controls. The side mirrors are adjusted here. You just pick a side and adjust it with this little pad and then the side mirrors can be power folded in with that button. And the trunk release is here. You push in to release the trunk, pull out and hold it in order to lower the power trunk. The driver's seat also is powered. You can go up, down, tilt, all that stuff. And it also has the um, manual thigh extension like the other side. Basically pops out like so. There's additional controls on the screen here as well. So you can go in there and adjust the seat on the screen or you can do it here. So yeah, these are really comfortable seats. They are heated, three stage heated seats. It's also a heated steering wheel as well. Here to the left of the steering column, uh, there's a few buttons here. Uh, so this right here is to adjust the vent, which is kind of hidden in here. And then this is to open and close the vent. And then here is to go to the lighting settings. Here's to turn uh, the headlights on, automatic, or you can turn them off here. And then there's a power tilt and telescoping steering column as well. And I like the way this is, this is like a cloth right here. Kind of keep from dust from going in there and it looks nice. I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I'm six feet tall and I have the driver's seat all the way down and all the way back. Uh, and I'm six feet tall and I feel like a toddler. <laughs> So there's lots of leg room. You could be like an NBA player and drive this vehicle. Should be no problem. Uh, so let me go ahead and pull it back up here so I can reach to the controls. Uh, but yeah, you can see the leg room here is good. Everywhere is good. I mean, overall, the comfort of the seat is excellent. Uh, the driving position and the steering wheel. Man, is this a really nice soft steering wheel. It has really good thickness in all the places that you would typically grip. Here at the very top is much thinner. It does have the 12 o'clock line right there, uh, which comes in handy. And then the, I don't know, the thickness and the softness of the steering wheel, very, very impressive. Feels really good. And it has like a two color contrast stitching there on the center. Really nice. And it's not overly, like it doesn't feel like it sticks up too much. You can, it feels comfortable when you're gripping it. Uh, the, some, some vehicles have the stitching there in the center, kind of pops up a little bit too rough. This one's nice and smooth, rounded. And of course the two color thing looks pretty good. It also has these like design, like sporty designs. So this is a, literally goes through all the way to the other side here, here, right in here, um, basically. It's a uh, open holes and it kind of has a sporty structure design to it. Once again, very impressive. So here on the left side is the cruise control. So it has, it's, it's relatively simple. Uh, it, 
you push this one button to set and turn on the system at the same time. So as you're driving, you just press that button, you automatically turned on the system and set it. Now, by default, it'll be the adaptive cruise control with the lane keep assist system, which works fantastic. Uh, but if you want to turn off the lane keep assist, you can toggle that on or off here uh, with the mode button. Now, the resume button is the same button. So if you're driving along and you hit the brakes or something and you cancel it, you can cancel it and you can resume it with this button right here. Uh, and then you can set right here and you can change to the speeds as well. Now, here on this side is the volume for the radio. You can change to the audio source here. It'll pop up on the heads up display. Uh, this is the little gear and these little buttons right here will score, correspond with the screen. We'll get to that in a minute. Your phone button, he has one phone button to answer and hang up. I uh, prefer two buttons, like one dedicated hang up button, but it has one button for both. And then it has this voice recognition system and it actually understands what you say really good. Uh, has the, 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 the actual voice recognition system that your words will come out perfectly. It'll actually display on the head, heads up display what you said. Um, but it has trouble taking your words and fitting it to the very narrow uh, commands that the system has. So if the, if the vehicle were a little bit more interpretive if as far as like, you know, you, instead of having very precise commands, you know, it's supposed to be natural speech voice recognition system. And it's, it, it does understand what you say, but as far as like trying to use it, it's a little bit, it's not like you can use it like an AI system. It's more like it recognizes certain commands and nothing more, you know, that kind of thing. So in that sense, it's okay. Now this button left to right, uh, and then there's a scroll wheel here as well. Um, and this corresponds, depending on what you're doing, um, mostly for the screen up here. Now it has this boost paddle over here, and this gives you like 10 seconds of like maximum performance the vehicle has. It also, uh, when you have that engaged, it also gives you the maximum regen as well. Uh, so it just really, you know, makes the vehicle super duper responsive, but it's only for 10 seconds, you know. The vehicle's already very powerful and very fast, so this is kind of just a novelty. Uh, there's no scenarios in which I can envision a person driving this vehicle in which they would, even in the eco-type mode, would not have enough power. It's just re really, really powerful. Windshield wiper controls are here, and it has an automatic rain sensing system as well, and you can see that little uh, status light showing you that it is activated. Um, so you can turn that off if you want to by pulling it down. One click up is automatic and then you can manually uh, go through the wiper system there. Turn signal of course is here on the left side. It also has the automatic high beams as well. First thing you'll notice with this uh, gauge cluster is basically a screen and you notice these little lights right here flashing. Uh, there's actually some here on the side. I have them cropped out as well. But basically these are um, infrared illuminators. You won't see those with your naked eye. Uh, the camera's picking them up though. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cover those up. But basically, this has a little camera in here with these illuminators so they work at day or night and even if, with, if you have like sunglasses on to keep an eye on your eyes to make sure you're paying attention to the road. Uh, there's other cameras in the vehicle as well and I'll show you that in a, in a few minutes. But, um, but so I'm going to go ahead and just cover these lights up so you don't see them anymore. Now, so this area right here, really cool looking design. Uh, for one thing, it has the battery percentage there, how many miles you're driving, outside temperature, the time. It also shows the last speed limit sign it passed, the status of the um, seat belt systems, uh, front and back. It also shows a digital speedometer there in the second in the center, but it also has this little bar right here, which shows the the, the speed here on this side is how much power you're using or regenerating so as you drive it'll go up and as you regen by coasting or going down a hill or like go, you know breaking that kind of thing it'll show the, re the status of the regen so that's the main features it's not overly too busy it has relevant information it looks really good um, but if we go ahead and change the view here I'm gonna use a little gear and I'm gonna change the content and the content go down here to this first one and it shows you how much energy you're using uh, and then in total miles and then um, 
and then your distance in the most recent trip that you've reset. Let's go back here. Next one will be your how how basically your what's the status of your distance you can travel. So if you go turn off the climate control and you travel really really light, you can go two, 270 miles. Uh, as it is with the climate control and all that stuff is 241. And then at the very minimum is 135. Now, I'm not sure where that 135 is coming from. I guess if you're like flooring it and it's like frigid cold outside and you're driving really fast on a highway or something like that, I'm not sure where that comes from. Um, I haven't got anywhere close to that low of, of range. But, but anyways, it gives you the min, min max and, and basically what it's estimating. The next one is the... Uh, it basically shows your assist systems here with your lane keep assist system, which works really good, and the adaptive cruise control. And as you drive, it'll show information here. Uh, the next one is my favorite. The This is the um, augmented reality. So basically, as you drive, it shows a camera in front of the vehicle. And even that just by itself is really interesting because as you look away from the road down to the gauges... Um, typically, you're taking your eyes off the road. But as you're driving with this system, with the camera in front of you, you're actually still looking at the road, even when you're looking down. You're briefly looking down at the gauges, you're still looking at the road. Um, so that's pretty interesting. But also, the augmented reality part is it overlays the lines on the road, and also it has a little green bar showing that it sees the information, it sees if there's any vehicles in front of you. And if there is, it puts a little square around them telling you that the system recognizes that there's a vehicle there and you know, it uses the adaptive cruise control to keep a set distance. So yeah, this is really, really, really good. Uh, it's really neat, you know, it's not like essential, but it's a really neat feature. I would say that the camera system in the front, just being able to just still see the road uh, is while you look at this screen, while you look down at the gauges is really, really fantastic. Uh, so I really like the augmented reality feature on this vehicle. All right, so the next one will be your, um, this basically your navigation. So right now it's just showing a digital compass, but as you drive, if you have a, like a destination set, it will give you relevant information here, turn by turn directions, and it'll wait until it comes up to the, the next stop, and it'll get, when you get close to it, it'll say, here's the intersection you need to turn, the relevant information when you need it. Really good. Same thing with the heads up display, it has that, that option as well. This will actually show the map. Um, so it shows you, you know, what's on the map, which is great. Uh, so, you know, the, sometimes you just need your bearings. You don't necessarily have a destination set, but if you do, this is handy as well. But if you want to keep an eye on the map, see where you're at in relationship to other uh, roads and stuff, uh, you can have this up here. Next one down, this will show your G-forces. Uh, every time you drive, like right now, I was showing some my latest drive, what what I what the G forces were, and uh, so basically, how hard you brake, or your cornering, or your acceleration. So it gives you all those different directions there, uh, the G forces that the vehicle was did in in the last drive. Uh, the next one will be just what, whatever your radio is playing. So right now, it's showing information about what's playing, and. Uh, you know, in the status, like a little status bar at the bottom, how long the song is or whatever. What If you're on a radio station, that kind of thing will pop up. All right, that's the bottom one. We started off with this one, which is nothing. Uh, but you can select the one you want. And I prefer, as far as actual useful driving information, the augmented reality view right here. Now, if we go over to the right, we have different layouts here. So we have that one, that one, and that one. This one gives you an expanded view of the camera. This one's basically kind of more tighter view, more wider view here. And then it's kind of like a little cut off there. Everything's on to one side and then it leaves the other side open. Just kind of neat, depending on which, I prefer that one, I think. And then the heads up display is the last one over here and then we'll scroll from the bottom up. 
So we'll go down here to the bottom. Scrolling from the bottom up, the first one is reduced view, which is basically just the bottom part and nothing above it really, unless there's a navigation going on. And this is really good at nighttime because sometimes if there's too much stuff on this heads up display, it's a little bit bright and it's kind of in the way and distracts you from a dark road, that kind of thing. Uh, so this is my default for nighttime. Uh, scrolling up from there, the next one is sport mode. And it basically has this like wings that kind of move as you turn and you know, they, there's this little bar that expands when you accelerate. It's kind of interesting. It's not really like practically useful. Um, this also pops up when you press the boost paddle as well. And it gives you like 10 seconds of boost. This just automatically pops up when you see that, when you have that as well. The next one is the assisted view. Uh, so this will show uh, basically the the status of your lane keep assist system, if there's any vehicles in front of you, and uh, information about that. Um, it's not really super useful. You can get the same information on the screen down here. So, I, and it kind of gets in the way. Sometimes it just extends up a little bit too high uh, on this on the windshield. So I don't really prefer that one very much. The directional view is very, very good when you have the navigation going. Uh, so default will just be a compass, but when you have the navigation started, it actually tells you how far to the next intersection that you have to turn. And when it gets close to the intersection, it will display the map up here and show you precisely when to turn. Uh, this is very useful um, because it, it tells you right when you get to the, the actual intersection. You know, it doesn't display it all the time. It doesn't get in your way, but right when you're about to turn, it shows you to make sure that you're going, uh, taking the right turn or whatever exit or whatever the case may be. Uh, the next one going up is the standard view, um, which is basically like, kind of like the reduced view in a way, but just looks a little bit different. Uh, but you know, it, it's still good. It's either this one or the reduced view would be fine at nighttime. Uh, but the clarity of the, the image and the amount of information, all that stuff is excellent. Now you can, when you press the phone, the, uh, the actual audio button here, it will give you the ability, it pops up a little menu here and you can uh, change your audio source here. So there's other things that kind of pop up on the screen when you need it to. Uh, it looks really good. Once again, clear, it has decent colors. Um, it's just basically having like a, a really high resolution screen right here on the windshield. And uh, so yeah, and to my eyes, it's very crisp, always very clear. You just adjust the height and everything for your eyes and your seating position. And uh, it works really well overall. Now you'll notice these little buttons right here. So this button right here, when you press that, and there's also a button here to go into the settings for the light and there's the settings for the seat. When you press that, it pops up here on the screen. And so you have the driver, seat con uh, climate seat controls will be your three-stage heated seat. You also have the he heated steering wheel, three-stage heated steering wheel, passenger three-stage heated seat as well. So it's kind of like a shortcut to that particular setting. And same thing with here. When you hit that button, it pops up the lighting, um, exterior lighting settings. So. You know, they're, they're handy because they're right there with the rest of the controls. Uh, so that's really, really convenient. Um, so typically you would just kind of cycle through headlights on or automatic, and then you can turn them off there. But the parking lights have to be turned on here on the system. You also have this shortcut here for vehicle settings. Hit that and it pops up here. Driver assistance, the lane departure warning system. Uh, and the lane departure warning system is good. It doesn't bug you or anything. Um, it does a pretty good job. It actually illuminates these little lights right on here on the steering wheel. It also vibrates the steering wheel. And depending on, you know, your scenario, it might beep at you too. But, uh, but it's not, it doesn't really bug you. It does a really good job. And then you can turn on these iconic sounds. It's kind of, sounds kind of funny when you're driving. I guess it's kind of neat to be able to hear some sound when you hit the accelerator. When you're just kind of cruising, you don't hear it. When you hit the accelerator, uh, you have like a little bit of a electronic sound um not really a fan of it but you know I, I see it like if you're used to a gas car and you just you want to have some sounds when you accelerate i guess you can have that but um you have that it kind of sounds better than other vehicles anyway and then drive off support so this will be if you're on slippery surfaces ice snow something like that and you want to accelerate ease off your 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 initial drive off 
uh, you can engage that to make it a little bit safer so you don't slip tires, that kind of thing. And also you can go in your charging settings here. Now, so that's another quick access button and it's, a, it's appropriately placed to where you can go into different settings quickly without having to go through and hit the button and go through all these different submenus to get to that particular topic. So I like the way they, they designed that. So the main screen over here is a touch screen. So you can make different selections here on the screen, um, but you can also use the scroll wheel and the shortcuts down on the console, which can be very convenient. Uh, but sometimes you just want to, you know, just touch the screen and get it over with, you know. Um, but being able to use this little dial down here and the crystal dial and the little shortcut buttons around it, it's really handy. So you have like uh, these little widgets right here that you can quickly go to stuff here on the left. Uh, but you'll notice that it has these little icons down here and this is where you can go in and get to the main features uh, there's also shortcuts swiping from the top you can go to these shortcuts here as well there's also the push buttons around the dial so the home button takes us home and then we can go to media and show the different devices here so right now I don't have my fair, my phone paired to the to the system right now, but it's showing. Um, and then you can go. Let's go back to the media. There's the different audio sources, presets for different audio. Um, this could be AF, AM, FM, or satellite radio. But you notice there's no AM. And part of the reason why is because the um, some EVs have a RF signature which interferes with AM radio. So that's my guess on why they don't have AM radio here. It's just FM satellite radio. All right, let's go back out of that. All right, telephone, well, you can connect it that there. Navigation, you notice this is all these little icons right here are the same, very similar shortcuts down here next to the dial. Uh, so the navigation map, you can scroll in and out and get your bearings see what you're doing around here uh, you can also put in a destination and recent destinations my destinations different ones you s saved you can also have the, the voice recognition the system is kind of primitive i mean it's for the you know this basically the same type of you know set command type system that you have to say stuff but it does work okay it does recognize what you say very well but there's not that the, the, the actual commands are more limited. All right. There's the phone. Now right here, so there's the radio, the audio, navigation, climate control is here. Uh, so this is where you can, you know, adjust the fan speed, where you want the air to blow. And it has the driver and passenger separate. You have individual settings here. You have preconditioning settings. So you can set it up to where it'll, uh, like, precondition the vehicle before you leave for work, that kind of thing. Right here is your all apps. And you can set it, it's separated by infotainment or vehicle. And there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, and most of the stuff you set it up and you just don't worry about it. Now it does have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto wirelessly if you want to use those those apps. Um, but the there's very few things in here that you would need to go into after you get it set up for the first time. But if you need to, you know, set to go in here and um, say. It has the interior lighting for the ambient lighting system, exterior lighting for, say, you know, um, welcome lights, that kind of stuff. Doors and windows, like, you know, when you lock the doors, you do you want it to lock the driver door in every door or just one door? Or do you want to automatically unlock that kind of thing? Under doors and windows settings, you go to comfort access. And if you want the vehicle to just simply unlock when you walk up to the vehicle with the key, um, or relock when you walk away with the key, uh, you can turn these features on or off here. So you don't necessarily have to use the system on the handle. Um, also, if you have this set, 
Uh, it basically just makes it to where it hits the unlock button on the key fob, you know, that, that has that effect. So on the night video, I'll point out that it doesn't have an approach light, but if you set it to unlock, in the process of unlocking, when you walk up to the vehicle, we'll turn on some lights. So that's a way of getting kind of like an approach light when, uh, even though it's not really, um, but it does have that, that feature here. The camera system is really well done. So I'm gonna push the camera button. This also pops up when you put it in reverse or if the parking sensors detect something. Uh, so we press that button. Right now, we're seeing the top down view here. We're also seeing the front view. So I'm not in reverse. I'm, I'm looking, this showing the front view. And there's different views here. So this is called the panorama view. We go to more, we have the 3D view, which is kind of interesting. It's, it's looking at the vehicle. Um, this has gesture controls. Uh, so you can like wave your hand and, um, and you know, make it change, but we're just gonna push the button here. So you can see the different views there. It also has a car wash view, so you can keep an eye on the front as you're pulling into a car wash. It's kind of neat. Uh, camera cleaning, so you can push that to clean the cameras, obviously. And then you have your different settings here. Parking view, assist view, and then there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in reverse so you can see what happens. So now it shows the backup view, and then it shows the top-down view here. It also has active guidelines, so as I turn the steering wheel, it will show the guidelines move. They're very precise, very nice. Uh, you also have different views here, so you can see the right side of the vehicle. You can see that even the status of the brake lights is pretty cool. And then you can see that view. Or you can go back to the front view here. And that's the automatic view right there. Uh, this one right here shows like cameras inside the vehicle apparently, but when I press the button, nothing happens. Um, so, not sure what that is all about. Can't get it to display anything here. Like, you know, keep an eye on your back seat drivers or something like that. But this is pretty cool. You can see right, right there on the side and get a general idea where you are next to a curve. If it's, if it's a little bit, if it was a little bit closer, you can really keep an eye on the tires a little bit better. There's the view. Now you can see the camera position um, is, <laughs> when I talk about the, the position of the rear view, ca the, the, the cameras, no matter where they are, um, there's always a way you can do it this better, right? So looking at this view right here, you're looking at uh, the car. It's put it in a position to where it's not integrated into the design of the vehicle. And so it's kind of tucked in near the tag. So it's basically just see, you're seeing, you know, where, where you have limitations there. It's still fine. It still works fine. And, and the resolution is all that good. But I think the, the actual placement of the camera could be a little bit better. The way the parking sensors work is if you get too close to something, get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Now you notice it's not, it's not beeping at me right now, but it's showing these green blocks right here, letting me know that I'm getting close to something. And they will be anywhere that there's an object basically. So as I get closer, they're green, then they start turning yellow and then like an amber color. And now, now it's beeping at me, let me know it's too, now they're turning red. Letting me know I'm getting a little bit too close uh, to the vehicle here. Uh, so not only does it have the, the, the audio, but it has the visuals here in addition to the camera and it, and it kind of puts it out there right where to look um, in case there's, you're not seeing something, it shows you using the sonar system where it is. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse. So now we can back up. We still have these indicators here as we're going in reverse, just in case. Especially if there's something on the side of the vehicle. Um, so like right there showing, it's rec recognizing that little thing right there. So if there's something on the side of the vehicle and I turn the steering wheel in that direction, 
we don't want the front wheels to hit it. So even it keeps an eye on the side, front and back, even if you're backing out or going forward. So it's like a full 360 camera, uh, camera system, but also a, a sensor system. When you pull into a parking spot, like I am kind of crooked right now, you'll see that it has an estimated area in which the doors swing out. So right in there, it shows a little shadow where the door is gonna swing out. So you can get a general idea of where you are in relationship to other things and if you have enough room to open up the doors. So I think that's a really nice touch. So there's touch sensitive buttons down here. Um, and this is for the, the front and rear defrosters, four way flashers, but you notice these buttons right here, these little buttons. And basically what they are, the vents are actually hidden. Uh, I don't know if you notice that, there's no, it's very, very little vent. You can see it right there, there's a vent. And then right in here, there's airflow coming out, out of this area here. So you can kind of, they're kind of well hidden. And how you adjust them is you can open and close them with these buttons here. So zero be no air, one will be full air. And you can you can choose the degree of the amount of air that comes out. To adjust the aim, there's these little button, these like little um, knobs. So you can go up, down, and left and right, and they're rubberized as well. So there's one up here, there's one up here, there's one over there. So just below the vent is where the adjustment is. So they hit hide the vent. And then you can still adjust it. It's just less, it's, it's just kind of more subtle way of doing it. Instead of having this huge vent that you grab and move around. Thought that was a pretty cool way of doing it. So there is some uh, phone chargers here. Now my phone with the case doesn't fit in here. So let me grab my phone so you can see what I'm talking about. With the case, it probably won't charge with the case anyway because I have kind of a thick case, but it won't lay flat. So I think this is a S23. So, um, yeah, like a little fan starts to come on. And it tries to do it, but it's just too much space. It's not laying flat. Um, but, yeah, I think if you, if this was a little bit bigger, I think it would work better. But it has two places anyway. Then there's the uh, cup holders here. And two USB ports. They're kind of hidden, so looking from this view, you don't see the USB ports. You kind of have to look over like that uh, to see there's two USB-C ports here. And here's the nice crystal dial. And there's some shortcuts here. Volume for the radio. And you can press down to mute it. Now, the only issue with this is it's not very, it's very smooth. So as you're scrolling it, it's kind of hard to scroll it without putting pressure on it. And when you put pressure on it, you might sometimes accidentally press that button. You can also change the tracks here. Um, we saw this button here. This is for the parking camera system and also uh, the parking assist system as well. Now, this is the shifter. <laughs> uh, so to start and stop the vehicle, like start it up, you push that button to stop it. Actually, you could just get out of the vehicle because it just turns off automatically. As a matter of fact, it's hard to keep on. So if I just open the door and start to get out, it basically just automatically turns off. So filming this vehicle is kind of hard because sometimes there's some shots I want to get when I open the door and get out and get some shots. Well, I can't because it shuts the vehicle off. So there's some of the shots I'm not able to get. Uh, but anyways, you know, that's just how you start it. This is the actual shifter. Uh, so you pull it all the way down for drive. Pull it again for braking. So this is where if you're going down a hill, you need significant engine braking, uh, you can use that feature. Pull it down again, it goes back into drive. Pull it forward just gently, goes into neutral. And then pushing it all the way forward will be your reverse. And a couple things happen when it's in reverse. The camera system pops up here, parking sensors pop up. So everything's really ready to go as far as that goes. Now the, the parking sensors work great. Uh, they actually beep at you when there's something there, but it also gives you a visuals here on the screen as well. Really, really good. Um, so yeah, the parking sensors, the camera system works great. You know, everything as far as that goes is, is excellent. So let's go ahead and put it in park. So that's the park button. So now it's in park and engages the electronic parking brake, which is the rear wheels. And then there's also auto hold. So if you want the vehicle to hold the brakes while you, when you come to a complete stop, like a stop sign or 
stoplight or whatever traffic jam uh, you can have that on and when you have that on um, it has a little status light and it'll hold the brake for you you will need to press the accelerator to resume driving though okay so my modes this is kind of interesting when we press that button um, it has it has uh, the personal sport efficient expressive relax and digital art and basically so most of it's aesthetic but some of it is actually changing uh, the actual drive modes like your you know like sport mode that kind of thing so if we're in personal here we can hit settings and we have the we can choose this one to be the very one that we start with we go to the next one sport we go into settings and we can adjust the drivetrain driving dynamics steering damping and we can reset everything to default and you notice that the, the, it looks different, you know, like the actual lights turn down here, the ambient lights turn differently. So it's kind of like a, you can check out this in a night video. Um, so let's go ahead and put it in a sport mode so you see what happens here. Kind of has this red lights and then it transitioned the, those lights there, blue to the blue there on the side and then still red in the middle. And then the screen looks like that. And then we had this view right here. So it gives this ambience of sport, you know, it gives this ambience of sport in addition to the actual sport mode of the performance of the vehicle. Next one is efficient. So this would be like an eco mode. And you can see now we have the blue there. We have the uh, blue screen here. Kind of looks like that. And in efficient, we have the settings and we can have um, efficient visibility functions and efficient climate control. We can turn those on or off. And you see it says active, activate maximum range. So we can hit that to activate max, maximum range. It's really going to cut back on uh, performance and a bunch of different things and climate control and all that but stuff, but it will give you the maximum range if we need it. Expressive. So this is kind of neat. So we have like these lights here. And then we have that view there. And then this changes to that look. We have these active lights kind of kind of cycling through. Kind of neat. So, and this was just aesthetic. Like there's no, there's no like um, performance changes or anything. Uh, and then we hit the settings here. We can choose whether we want the sun protection to open up or stay closed or whatever. And in my case, I set it to no change. Next one will be relax. And then the, the lights here change to a more relaxing, I guess, look. We have the relaxing image here and the gauges are relaxing, I guess. Settings on that, sun protection, climate control, and smart mode. So, or start mode. Um, if you want this to be the starting mode that you start with is what it means. All right, digital art is pretty interesting. So right now it's making sure that the, that the windows are open, the back shade just opened up. We have these purple lights everywhere. We have that cool looking design there. And let's go into the settings and you can see that um, there's no option to turn off the shade opening. So it just automatically does that. The shade and the center roof open up. And there's also this thing where it has like the artist talking. Uh, I can hit that and hear them talk about their design choices, that kind of thing. So yeah, the, so the my modes is not like drive modes necessarily. It's more aesthetic, a little bit of drive mode and a lot of aesthetic, you know. So it's kind of cool blend of both. All right, so this armrest right here is very soft, comfortable. This is harder, but this is soft right here. That's where my arm rests most of the time. I don't really, this really isn't really a factor being hard. Um, but yeah, unless you're like super tall and have the seat way back. And this opens up, press that button. These open up like so, and there's a felt line compartment. Get my business cards out of the way. And there's a little light, 12 volt power supply. 
and a little place to put some coins or quarters right here. And it has a little rubber bottom as well. But not super huge compartment. And this can kind of like serve as a property line. So if you want to share it with the passenger, you can. And you just tell them not to go over the line. The rear view mirror is an auto dim rear view mirror. It has the home light garage door opener controls on the bottom. And it's auto dimming right now because they have the shade over the light sensor. And uh, so it's auto dimming. The side mirror, mirror over here is auto dimming. Uh, but the one on the right is not auto dimming. It's just the one here on the left. Up here, uh, there is some interior lights. So when you press that button there, it just has like a reading light. It's very dim, just shines in your lap. Um, it's kind of good, especially if you don't want to get blinded while you're driving. There's all the, also these little ambient lights right here as well. Work really good. Uh, there's a light there. And then there's a shortcut here to go into the interior light settings. And this is where you can change your ambient lights, uh, the reading lights, have the lights to open with the door and then the interior cockpit brightness at night so if you're sensitive to bright lights at night you can take that right on down including turning things off um, so it's, you know you don't have to have any of these extra lights you can also turn them dim or you can have them bright however you want and here's the other camera remember i said there was more cameras in the vehicle uh, this camera is for gesture controls so it keeps an eye on this area right here and so um so one of them is you can go like this and adjust the volume. You can go to the left, down, or up. And it, and so there's different ones. You can swipe different things away. I'm not exactly sure. All, I hadn't practiced, you know, all the different, uh, different gestures. But uh, basically, depending on what your screen and what you're doing, you can use gesture controls to control the screen without touching anything, which is kind of cool. Especially considering you're getting fingerprints on all this gloss black. So if you don't want to touch anything, you can use the gesture controls. You just got to practice them. And that's the camera that keeps an eye on this area down here. It's kind of weirdly angled, uh, but apparently that's the area in which you can see. I guess it keeps on the driveway too. I'm sure that's part of it too. Roadside assistance is up here as well. The visors are a vinyl type material. The headliner is a cloth black, so they match in color, but this is a different material here. Easier to clean material, especially since you're touching it. There's a little clip here. There's a light and a mirror. It's a nice soft light, and it goes from one side to the other. So instead of two separate lights, it has one bar light there at the top. Uh, so at nighttime, it's not overly bright, it's not gonna blind you, and it gives you a nice soft light on your face, not harsh, bright, um, you know, light on your face and it's not on just one side where you have shadows on your face so it's all the way across well really well done um, it does not slide or anything like that so the coverage over here is okay but you got some places there where the sun can come in basically same thing on the other side okay so this is a I keep referring it to us as a sunroof but it's actually just a a glass roof you know there's no ability to open it or tilt it or anything like that uh, but it does have a shade and you can control the shade right here so press that button and you can close it and it covers it blocks like 99% of the light sometimes you can see a little bit shining through this this material but uh it is a nice power shade. You can do it halfway, or you can have it all the way. Looking at the visibility here in the back, it has a big back glass. The pillar is a little bit wide there, but it's not really a big deal. This pillar is a little wide. It has a shade. Let me go ahead and open the shade. See what that looks like. It doesn't really cause a big problem as far as visibility during the day. I can see where it could be an issue at nighttime though. But it does have the really good camera system, blind spot detection system, parking sensors, rear cross traffic alert, um, all kinds of safety features, technology and stuff to help you drive the vehicle safely. And to me, it hasn't really been an issue. Just kind of looking out the side mirrors, looking at the rear view mirror, looking out over my shoulder, that kind of thing. It's been no problem driving the vehicle um, as far as that goes. 
the way this vehicle is, it doesn't matter if you're in sport mode or not, you can still have a ridiculous amount of acceleration. It also has this boost paddle here to the left to give you a little bit extra, but it's already ridiculous um, acceleration. So just to show you what it's like in, in sport mode, It just launches like crazy. Uh, I did some calculations and basically it can achieve 60 miles an hour within like 160 feet. So it really pins you to your seat. And uh, the boost, when you pull the boost paddle, it's just, it gives you 10 seconds of just ridiculous more uh, responsiveness and um, you know, just crazy amount of, of power and acceleration. Uh, so yeah, even without the boost, it's fine. Any drive mode this vehicle has, you're not going to be lacking in power. You're going to be able to pass people within seconds. You're going to be able to merge, no problem. It's, it's excellent as far as the power and responsiveness of the system. There's all kinds of like gesture controls and it has this camera right above my hand. And as I make motions with my hand, uh, it will pick them up and if you know what to do so like you go like that for the volume up and down and uh, So there's, you can swipe away different things you could do stuff gestures with your hands if you know what it is uh, To operate the system without actually going in and touching and engaging with things What's interesting about this camera here is that? Typically when you look down you're not looking at the road, but if you look down at the gauges You're still looking at the road with the augmented reality. It actually can recognize there's a vehicle in front of you here on the screen and it puts a little s square box on them in addition to you know defining where the lines are on the road and stuff like that now i have this vehicle set at a far distance and you have to go into the settings over here and all these sub menus in order to change the adaptive cruise control distance and uh so to me it's a little bit close but you know it's okay it's not it's not like it's overly close but if, me personally I probably would have a little bit further distance than what the maximum is on the system uh, the heads-up display is showing this is in the assisted view and we can see the vehicle there now the assisted view doesn't change it just like a straight line there but at least it shows that it recognized the, the vehicle uh, the assisted view isn't very isn't really that useful uh, on the heads-up display uh, I prefer the the directional view is kind of neat if you need, you know, if you really need the compass. But the reduced view is really good, and the standard view is really good. Sport view is kind of neat, I guess, uh, but you know, it's just kind of a. It's not very helpful as far as driving. I mean, does it give you any additional information? It's kind of neat little visual while you're driving, I guess. The lane keep assist system is really good. Uh, it, it doesn't fight with you. Uh, but it holds the lane really good even on curves and stuff like that and it is just an impressive i think this is probably the best um like hands-on lane keep assist system that i've driven it's able to maintain the road and when you're holding the steering wheel it has a grip sensor so just lightly gently touching the steering wheel you're fine uh, it also it does have a little camera. I don't know if you can see the flickering here that keeps an eye on your face, makes sure you're paying paying attention to the road and stuff like that. But it doesn't bug you like some other vehicles. It's really not a big deal. Uh, so the the actual assist systems here, as far as the cruise control, adaptive cruise control, and the lane keep assist system, is excellent. It really is a pleasure to drive this vehicle. And the additional you know view here on the screen is is great uh you know it's i think a lot of vehicles like like they need to look at this technology and kind of consider using it just for the fact of you're looking down at the gauges and you're not taking your eye off the road because the road is here down down here as well uh in addition to in front of you so you know you kind of like can keep an eye out for the most part on what's going on in front of you either way either where your wherever your eyes are you still see it uh, and also it gives you real-time clarity uh, like you you know for a fact that the system sees the lines because it actually 
imposes the augmented reality over the lines. It also sees the vehicle in front of you because it shows the little box around it. Uh, so you have confirmation on that the system's working properly and that it's not, you know, it's not, you know, not seeing something. Uh, same thing with the voice recognition. Now, the voice recognition system, it shows you on the heads up display what you said and that so it knows it is displaying what you actually said. So it has the voice recognition hears you, displays what you said. So that way it, you know for sure that it, you, it pick, picked up what you said. But the problem with this system is that it's just like all the old systems 10 years ago, where it, it's there's only very, very limited commands that you can say on the system. Um, so if you don't, if you say something that's totally logical, uh, it, it's not like a um, an AI system or anything. It's just voice recognition, then it tries to punch it into a very, very limited amount of options. So, it, you know, a vehicle 10 years ago is basically the same type of type voice recognition system so they haven't really improved on that uh, even though they have you know you would think that it'll have some kind of AI system that would uh, be able to understand what you say and then um, carry out or at least try to carry out what, you, what you're asking for you know the seat pinning experience is not just from a standstill even if you're going a even if you're going 55 miles an hour, when you punch it, it puts you right back in your seat. Uh, it is crazy how much power this vehicle has and how well it's delivered to the road. So I turned on the iconic sounds and basically you just hear them when you accelerate. There is a sound when you back up. Just kind of alerting other people that you're backing up. But when you accelerate, it has like this little rev sound. Kind of reminds me of the Tron Legacy uh, sound effect that vehicles had when they're driving. Although they're like all electric, but then they have like this kind of engine rev sound to add to the excitement. So you notice when I not when I'm not accelerating, you don't hear the noise, and it's the thing about this vehicle is that there's not you can get up to 60 miles an hour in like 100 feet, 150 feet or whatever. So it's not a lot of places where I can demonstrate it too long here, but we will try. Yeah, you can hear it. It's kind of interesting sound. I think it, here we go. It's, it's better than other vehicles, I'll just say that. So yeah, that's what the iconic sound sounds like when you have those turned on. When you charge it at home with a level two charger, just plug it in, make sure it's secure there. You see that status light showing you that it's start, starting the charge. Under vehicle settings here, you can go to charging and you can have different options here. Charging mode, uh, in other words, when do you want it to charge? So you can just set the time in which you want it to charge. If you plug it in, uh, have it set to just to charge immediately when you plug it in. But if you don't want it to charge right away, maybe there's late at night, there's a time that you want it to charge, or, you know, cheaper electricity or whatever, uh, you can set that. Also, you, departure plan. So if you want the vehicle to warm up or cool down or get prepared in any way um, at a certain time before you leave, let's say you go to work, you leave at seven o'clock in the morning, well, it starts the vehicle up at, you know, say, a few minutes before that and gets gets it warm or whatever uh, so you can have that departure plan and you can set it up I have the AC limit to 32 amps 
we can go in here and adjust it. It goes all the way up to 48 amps, and then you can you know scroll down uh, to have different charge uh, limits. Now, you know, not all charge cables are going to be capable of 48 amps, but if you have that system set up, you can go up to that high. Uh, charging target, you can bring that down to a lower. Uh, it says charging target of 80% is recommended for fast charging, optimal battery life, and fastest charging route. Um, but, you know, on for whatever reason you want to raise or lower it, you can do that here. Uh, you can unlock the charge cable here. You can precondition the battery if it's very cold and you're headed to a DC fast charger. Uh, then you can precondition the battery and it takes a little while. While you're driving there, it'll do that. Alright, plug and charge, automatic. Um, so this is, plug and charge is basically, you set it up in advance um, with a particular charge station. And when you plug it in, it recognizes the vehicle and it's able to just go ahead and charge your, your account. Um, I don't really have experience with that, but it's depending on what, what it is. It's similar to Tesla, where it has it integrated into the system. And you just plug in the vehicle and you're done. All right, so then you can adjust the fan loudness. Um, let's go in there. Automatic, unrestricted, and restricted. So for whatever reason, you want to have it lower fan loudness so you can do that while it's charging. Now, if it's DC fast charging is really where the fans come in because it has to keep it cool. When you're just at home and you plug it in, it's not a big deal at all. Um, and then location-based charging settings. Uh, you can set it up to where, depending on where you are, you know, what charging place you go to or wherever, whatever location you're at, it'll have specific settings for that particular location. So it's in the name, basically. Um, but yeah, the charging is right there. And it's not really like overly complicated. It's very simple. Once you get it set up, like in my case, I got it all set up. I just plug in the vehicle and I don't think about it. It takes five seconds uh, at night and five seconds in the morning to unplug and I'm ready to go with a full 100% charge uh, or whatever, whatever I said, um, charge for the day. Now I have mine set to reduced uh, charging amps, but you can go up to 48 amps of charging. So right now it's uh, charging at seven kilowatts and it gives you an idea of how long it's gonna take before it's fully charged. So it's showing at 3.49 p.m. it will be at 100%, which you can reduce the 100% down to 90% or whatever, but I have it set to 100% right now. And then it has the, uh, so right now it's 1.26 p.m. and then it's showing uh, 3.49 p.m. for a full charge. We're at 86%, so it's not like it's a low charge or anything. So the higher percentage that you go, the kind of slow, it kind of slows down before, as you get up to that 100%, especially on a DC fast charger, it will, anything over 80% will be significantly slower charge rate. Uh, but I like the way it gives you clear information right here on the screen and it does, it pops up, it stays up uh, very, very clear on the status of the charging, the percentage how long it's going to take to charge, all that stuff is right here as a status bar. And I have it right here showing that I have it set to max 32 amps. Also here on the screen sometimes when you first get in, it'll show you um, the status of the charging. Vehicle's unlocked and you want to stop charging, just press down on this and it will turn white here. Stop the charging and you can go ahead and take it out, close the port. So let's see what the scale looks like when we drive this vehicle on it. Because it is a heavy electric vehicle here. Alright, so it's looking like 5520. So 5520 pounds with me in it and my equipment, <clears throat> stuff like that. So so yeah, there's no other passengers, just me. So that's a heavy car, and this feels like a very nimble uh, car. So that being able to handle that much weight um, is pretty impressive how it does it. And of course, the power and stuff like that, but also the suspension and and the uh, the traction and all that stuff really just puts together a really good package for that amount of weight. The driving experience is uh, is, is amazing. Yeah.